Today, 15 more of my Gen Con top picks, and I guarantee 100% fewer references to Kenny G this time. Not including the reference I just made just now, which would actually bring my uh, total up to exactly the same number as I made last video. So, great start. <laughs> I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, and we are mere days away from North America's largest annual board game convention, Gen Con, where at least 600 new board, card, and tabletop games are going to become available for gamers to add to their tables, their shelves, and their game nights. Now, I recently combed through this list of all 600 or so upcoming games, and I picked out the top about 10% of them, which interested me the most, and I thought, you know what? I will discuss this with the people in a video that I will introduce poorly. And that's what I'm doing right now. Now this is the third in a series of videos that counts through all of these top 60 picks. In fact, here's a clip from the previous episode. Players will play sound cards, which will help Kenny overcome uncool events. No jazz, playing in the elevator, will burn the building down. Huh, I guess, technically, now this video actually has 200% as many references to Kenny G as the last video did, so, okay. Anyway, I'm going to try to avoid games that I've previously discussed in other top 10, top 5, and other recent videos. There's still 30 of my top picks left to cover, so let's continue on with number 31, which is Letter Jam, a cooperative, deductive word game in which two to six players assist each other in composing meaningful words from the letters scrambled across the table. At the start of the game, each player receives a set of face-down letter cards that can be rearranged to form an existing word. Each player then puts one of their cards in a little stand in front of them to face the other players without looking at it themselves. And then, the game begins. Players then try to spell out their clue by putting numbered tokens in front of the other player's letter cards until the words can eventually be deduced. I always dig me word games in all sorts of various flavors, so Letter Jam really looks like it's one that could hit the spot, and it's one of the reasons why it's on my list to check out at Gen Con. Number 32 is Lockup, a role-player tale, an area control worker placement game utilizing secret unit development. Or deployment? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Alright, I looked it up on Board Game Geek, and the joke's on me. I can't read. In this game, players manage a group of minions, gnolls, kobolds, bugbears, goblins, or insectoids. We play no favors here. But all of these critters are locked up in Coolback Prison. And each round, players are going to try to keep their suspicion from the guards under control while allocating their crew to different locations within the prison. The player with the strongest crew in each location at the end of each round gains some resources, hires the most powerful crew, and builds the most powerful items, increasing their reputation. In the end, player with the highest reputation, after six rounds, wins the game. Number 33 is Machi Koro Legacy. Ho <laughs> We better turn on the spoiler filter for this one, okay? Is it ready? Ready? Okay, because here we go. Machi Koro Legacy features the same gameplay as Machi Koro. You still roll dice, you're still collecting income, and you're still racing to build landmarks. But then, you unlock the and you start earning a little extra income by then, after you do all that, you can start to explore and then you have to make a choice. Do I either or do I Nobody knows. And even if you aren't in contention to win a particular game, you still have 700 for the next game. And then the players unlock Well, I thought all those things were common knowledge. Number 34 is Mageling, a dice placement engine building adventure game for one to four players that can be played competitively or cooperatively. In this game, you will take on the role of a young Mageling as you embark upon a perilous quest to save Evertree, the tree that's always there. That's why they call it Evertree. It's really an important piece of foliage. Everybody knows that, and it's up to you to protect it. That's really not what the game is about. Instead, the game is about using custom dice to activate spells, relics, creatures, and allies as you battle the dark forces of the Tempest in five unique locations throughout the game. To do this, you're going to need all of your wits and maybe a little help from your friends, because you're going to have to overcome the challenges of your journey and prevail in the final showdown of arcane sorcery and arborist achievements. Number 35 is a little card game called Medium. A social word game in which you try to read your friends' minds. Oh. You and a partner will have a hand of cards with words on them, such as banjo, tropical, short, bigfoot, or evertree. 
and you'll each play a card in an attempt to create a psychic connection together to think of a word that somehow connects the two that you have each chosen. Now to pass the round, you and your partner both have to say the exact same word on the count of three. So to win, you're going to have to be able to come up with the exact same word together at the exact same time. For example, what word would be the link between black and bird? One, two, three, honey mustard, of course. See, you get how this game works. We have a connection going. I played a few rounds of a prototype of this game at Origins, and I instantly fell in love with this game, and that's why Medium is on my shortlist of games I'm going to go track down, find, and scoop up, definitely, when I get to Gen Con. Number 36 is Point Salad, a fun and fast little card drafting game for the whole family, even Irwin. I know we don't invite him to much anymore, but we can invite him to this, because there's over 100 ways to score points in Point Salad. Players are going to use a variety of strategies, and every game of Point Salad is going to be unique. Additionally, the cards are themed as six different types of vegetables, and the back of each card has a different scoring method printed right on it. So, for instance, one scoring method may award two points for every carrot that you have, but deduct a point for every single onion. Because, wow, the stakes get really high really fast. But you can mitigate this by drafting combinations of veggies and point cards that work for the strategy that you are developing, and you can amass the most points, and then you can win the game, and then you can go have a healthy salad. You can amass the most points, allowing anyone, even Irwin, to walk away a winner. Number 37 is Potemkin Empire, in which you play the role of a mayor of a small Russian village. Your job is to attempt to impress the Emperor Catherine by convincing her that you have the most prosperous and stable village in all the land. But her visit is quickly approaching. In fact, it's approaching so quickly that <laughs> there's actually no time to actually fix your village. So you're just going to have to make it look as impressive as possible, okay? In short, you're just another corrupt liar that's going through life faking it. No, no, Erwin, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about you. Players will have to accomplish this task by drafting interior cards that are either real or fake and then combining them with facades to construct an imposing, if not flimsy, kingdom for display. This game appears to use folded paper facades that the players will actually put in front of them as they build their little village, which makes this game have a little bit more of a striking table presence and really makes it stand out to me as one that I added to my list because I want to check this out in a little more detail to really see if there's actual substance behind the scenes of this game. Number 38 is Quirky Circuits. Quirky Circuits is a game of robot programming silliness in which each player contributes to the programming of an adorable robot friend. But be warned, no one actually knows which commands the other players are going to be tossing into the mix, so you're going to encounter a little bit of absolute and complete chaos. So how will you mitigate this? Will you be able to help your little robot friend complete its task, or are you going to just unleash automated mayhem upon the world? Well, that's up to a combination of your technical prowess and lady luck to decide. So be careful, because you will have to work together before your robot's battery is fully drained, or else the game ends in failure and sadness and a little tiny bit of embarrassment. But you know a way that we can all win? By watching this commercial. Hey there! Welcome back, and my goodness, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Number 39 is Quad Heroes, a fast-paced, modular, scenario-based adventure board game that plays like a combination of Super Smash Bros., Mario Kart, and Legend of Zelda all wrapped into one. Yes, that's right. Whether it's a simple point-to-point -point rally style race, capture the flag, or a quest to uncover hidden secrets, each game is filled with unexpected events, lots of player interaction, ever-changing boards, and a dash of mayhem. As players explore this world, they'll find food and runes, items and pets, all in the form of cards that they can collect. These cards enhance their abilities, slow their opponents, and modify the world all around them. If you use your movement skill card strategically, you will emerge as the greatest of all the quad heroes. Now, right up front, this game's description made a lot of comparisons to a lot of different Nintendo games, and I have to admit I'm a little bit skeptical about the comparisons that it made. However, the preliminary research into the game suggests that it may just stand on its own merits as a solid game without all the comparisons to the library of Nintendo titles, which is why I put it on this list and why I'm going to go check it out at Gen Con to find out a little bit more about it. Number 40 is Rail Pass. 
In RailPass, two to six players work together to deliver as many goods as possible in 10 short minutes. Players are given a random assortment of different colored cubes and a small train with which to deliver them, and then the clock starts. And then the real work begins, because players will start taking their turns simultaneously in any order to transport their cargo. However, the trains can't necessarily travel too far without receiving a penalty, and too many penalties, and well, the whole game just goes off the rails. Yeah, I know that that was a train pun, but seriously, I got a chance to play this game at BGG Spring, and there was a lot of, you take this, no, you take that, no, here's this train, no, this is your train, oh my goodness, we're all gonna lose! Well, to be fair, I guess it was mostly just me bellowing like that. The other players seem to be having a fine time of things. So if you're a fan of trying to do absolutely everything at once until you break down and cry real tears, you may want to give Rail Pass a try. Number 41 is an expansion for Sagrada, the Great Facade's Passion. Named after the Sagrada Familia Facades, Sagrada the Great Facades is a series of expansions to be released in three parts, Passion, Life, and Glory, and this one is Passion. Each part of this expansion contains modules of content that the players can add individually or together to their original game of Sagrada. Passion introduces inspiration cards, rare glass dice, rare glass private objectives, and more public objectives. Number 42 is Shobu, a wonderfully crafted abstract strategy game for two players. This game features four square wood boards, two of each color, and 16 natural river stones for each player to use in two colors with a rope dividing the play area in half. A player's turn is split into two parts. First, a player must move one of their stones up to two spaces in any direction, including diagonally, in what is called a passive or setup move. And the second part of the turn is where things get interesting, because they take a more aggressive move in this part, which must be the same direction and number of spaces that they made in their first move. It's this second move that allows the player to push stones across the board or off the board's edge. And that's important, because if you remove all four of your opponent's stones from just one of the four boards, you win the game. I saw Shobu at Origins, and not picking it up there was my biggest regret of the convention, and I plan to rectify that mistake by scooping up Shobu as soon as I find it at Gen Con. Number 43 is Slide Quest. In this game, the bad guys have taken over your beautiful kingdom, and it's up to you to rescue it. Why is it always you? Why can't it ever be, you know, someone like Erwin? Ah, I wouldn't put Erwin in charge of doing that. The whole kingdom would be in disarray in minutes. No! No, everything's great. Go back to whatever you were doing. You have to save your world, and you have to do it quickly. So you're going to have to work together to guide your brave rolling knight through this turbulent adventure that's lined with twists and traps. Slide Quest is a three-dimensional dexterity game played within the box itself, in which players have to work together to guide their little rolling knight through turbulent adventures and traps in order to achieve their objectives. Speaking again of Gen Con, that's where I saw Slide Quest introduced for the first time, and it was one of those games that suddenly I saw Everywhere. Every single person I saw walking by the hall had a copy of Slide Quest tucked under their arms until they sold out. And I would not be surprised if the same exact thing happens at Gen Con. This is a quirky, silly little dexterity game, but one that also seems to have quite a few little interesting quirks and wrinkles worked into it. There's a set of scenarios with ever-increasing difficulty that you and the other players will have to work through, and I can guarantee that it is not going to be just as easy as rolling a marble into a hole. No. And that's why Slide Quest is on my list, because if you enjoy this type of dexterity game, it is definitely one that is worth checking out. Number 44 on the list is Star Trek Chrono Trek, a time travel game similar to Chrononauts, but imagine that, set in the Star Trek universe. In this game, each player becomes a Star Trek character with a unique identity and secret mission. Throughout the game, players will travel forwards and backwards in history, doing all of those things that people always seem to do when they have the opportunity to time travel. They'll visit the great moments of the past, they'll peek into the future, they'll collect artifacts, and they will come to grips with the paradoxes of time travel. Of course! <laughs> Change pivotal events and alter the course of history itself. Sound daunting? Well, it could be because I played a Back to the Future version of Chrononauts several years ago, and I really enjoyed the game, but man, it hurt my brain for like a week and a half. So I'm interested to see if the Star Trek Chrononauts game follows the exact same formula, or if it streamlines, simplifies, or introduces anything new into the Chrononauts formula. 
Because if it does, well, then I'm adding it to my collection in no time at all. Number 45 is Startropolis, a modular 3D space station game for two to four people. Each turn in this game, players will buy modules and connect them into the existing space station that they are constructing. This creates revenue and allows them to purchase even more modules as the game continues. Which is fortunate for the player because they are an alien CEO of an intergalactic planetary corporation which has received a bundle of seed money by investors from beyond the stars. So, with this big wad of dough in your little tentacled hand, what will you purchase? A solar powered monopoly? Luxury habitats? Me a sandwich? Whatever you do with your corporate wealth. In the end, the player with the most credits wins. Sandwiches sold separately. And there you go, 15 more games in this installment. Join me again in just a few days as we continue on to the next batch of games on our list of the top 60 games coming out for sale at Kenny G Con. Until then, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, and take care. I think it was deployment.